Welcome to Purely Prabhupada, Ancient Truths for the Upliftment of the Modern World. My name is Alexis. I would like to introduce you to Kamra Devi Dasi, also known as Dr. Karen Silverstein. You've put a lot of energy into the development of Purely Prabhupada. Please tell us a little bit more about it. What was your inspiration? My inspiration is simply the order of my spiritual master, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. He brought us so many wonderful literatures, translations from ancient India um, that are so relevant to today's world. His mission was twofold. He wanted to present the literatures, the teachings, the practices, and then he wanted that to evolve into sustainable community development, agricultural communities that were demonstrating and actively living the teachings that he's given in his books. So our goal in the development, in the creation of Purely Prabhupada, is to present Prabhupada's pure teachings and to develop online community with the goal of physical, sustainable communities according to the instruction and the desire of Srila Prabhupada. For those who don't know and are not familiar with Srila Prabhupada or his teachings, tell us a little something about him. Srila Prabhupada came to the West on the order of his spiritual master to teach love of Godhead in the English language. He went through a lot of personal tribulation, a lot of great endeavor to follow this order, this desire of his spiritual master. So in the same way, we also feel that we have to make this endeavor to spread what he so kindly brought us. I've written a synopsis of Srila Prabhupada's life that you can find on our website, purelyprabhupada.com, and I'm sure you'll find it quite interesting. The knowledge that Srila Prabhupada brought is from a different time period and a different culture. So can you tell our audience how these teachings are relevant in the modern world? These teachings are very relevant in that they're spiritual science. They're absolute truth. Um, spiritual science isn't a faith, a religion, a belief system, and it can't be owned or monopolized by any organization. This is a um, science that pertains to everybody. No matter what religion somebody professes, what sex, what color their skin is, everyone has to suffer birth, death, disease, and old age. There's nobody exempt. There are threefold miseries that are described in these literatures that everybody has to suffer. Um, misery is caused by our own minds, our own bodies. Misery is caused by other living entities, like fire ants in Florida. Misery is caused by nature, uh, tornadoes, hurricanes, droughts, floods. So nobody is exempt from these things. So these teachings of spiritual science are applicable to everyone. They give the information how to stop the cycle of birth and death with all its sufferings and go back to the kingdom of God. This kingdom of God is, is filled with never-ending joy where we can regain our relationship with our ever-well-wisher, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the reservoir of all pleasure, and the ultimate object of our love. It seems to be that in modern-day society, spiritual topics aren't really discussed. It's easier to become more absorbed in materialistic life. So who's going to be interested in these teachings? Actually, these teachings are for everybody because everybody is looking for Krishna. Krishna means the most attractive person, somebody who has a quality or many qualities that everybody will find attractive. So Krishna is the topmost name for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But yet what you're saying is very valid in that not everybody is going to wholeheartedly apply themselves to spiritual practice. 
the same as if you go into a jewelry store. Not everybody's going to buy the real thing. They're not going to buy the diamond, the emerald, the ruby. Most people are in there looking for costume jewelry. They're looking for the rhinestones. They're looking for the cubic zirconiums. So we are looking for intelligent people to study these literatures and apply the principles into their lives. Um, we can tell an intelligent person by the questions they ask. Questions such as, what happens at the time of death? Where do I go? I'm suffering. Why am I suffering? I'm looking to be eternally happy. That's really important. How do we become eternally happy? We're, we're looking at people who are asking, how did I get this body? When I was um, a teenager, I used to drive my rabbis crazy. How did I get this body? I have a female body. You have a male body. My dog has a dog body, yet we're all beings. How did we get these bodies? He really wasn't able to give me the answers at that time. But intelligent people are asking, how did I get a body that's attractive or not attractive? How did I get a body that was born in a wealthy family or, or a poverty-stricken family? So we're looking for people who are asking intelligent questions. In intelligent questions means about the purpose of life. These intelligent people are naturally going to be the leaders of society, and other people will follow them. So, yes, we're looking for intelligent people who are making relevant inquiries into the purpose of life. For the intelligent people who are seeking the truth, how is the pursuit of the absolute truth going to satisfy them? Actually, the pursuit of the absolute truth is the only thing that's going to make anyone happy. Um, the relative truths of this world aren't going to satisfy the heart. The truths behind political intrigues, um, people talk about 9-11 or chemtrails. Even if they knew the truths behind these things, it's guaranteed not going to make them happy in the heart. So the pursuit of the absolute truth, which is truth in relation to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is the only truth that will bring joy to the heart and real satisfaction. Is there a foundational principle to help one understand spiritual life? The foundational principle would be that we're not the body. And we can prove that by logic. I was regularly guest lecturing in the Religious Studies Department at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. There was a wonderful professor who wanted her students to know that they weren't just in a comparative religions course. She wanted them to have an experience of spiritual life so they could go away with something very rich and meaningful for them. So I would have them, I would play Simon Says with them. I would have them point to their nose, point to their left ear, point to the top of their head, point to their left shoulder, their right knee. And they'd be looking at me like, oh, okay, what's up? And then I'd say, I'll point to you. And their fingers would go in circles and it would go to their heads or their hearts. And then they'd look and go, okay, what's the punchline? What are you trying to tell us? So the punchline being who is the I who is saying, this is my body. Because if we were the body, we would not be saying my ear, my elbow, my shoulder, my knee. We would be saying I ear, I shoulder, I nose, I knee, I body. So just by simple logic, we can understand that we're not the body. And that is a fundamental foundational principle of spiritual life. What are the ramifications of thinking that we are the body? The ramifications of the false belief that we are this body affect us on a personal level and on a societal level. On a personal level, no matter what we do to try to gratify the body, uh, whether it's over-accumulating a wardrobe or just trying to eat so many nice things or 
cosmetic surgeries or so many things that people try to do to make themselves happy on the basis of the body, it's just not going to satisfy us. On a societal level, the belief that we're the body, that we are of a particular sex, a particular color, a particular nationality, this is at the basis for every prejudice, every racial disharmony, every um, national misunderstanding that's ever existed. So this is why we consider it a fundamental principle to understand that we're not the body in spiritual life. Thank you so much for sharing what Purely Prabhupada has to offer. You've taught us some really foundational principles of spiritual life. Is there anything more you'd like to add? Yes, these are very troubled times. There's a lot of turmoil. There's a lot of confusion. The teachings that His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, have given us through His Transcendental Literatures, if we hear them properly, if we apply the principles, they'll give us a place of solace, of shelter. People talk about safe space. They need a safe space. This world is upside down. So if we accept the teachings that Srila Prabhupada has given us, they will give us that safe space in which to repose our hearts. Srila Prabhupada told us that there was no lack except a lack of God consciousness. And he told us that the development of God consciousness, the development of Krishna consciousness, would solve all the problems of life. And so this is what we would like to offer through Purely Prabhupada and purelyprabhupada.com. If you are interested in the subject matter of this video and would like to learn more, please visit purelyprabhupada.com. Ancient Truths for the Upliftment of the Modern World.